Hi everyone, welcome to Crafty Corners YouTube channel. My name is Courtney and in this project today I'm going to be showing you how to use the new Smart Paper sticker cardstock to make this mandala project. We will be using this pack here. It has 10 sheets and it's the pastels version and we're going to be using each color to layer and make this mandala. This is actually my first time working with the Smart Paper sticker cardstock and spoiler alert, I really enjoyed it. I learned a lot along the way and I'll share that with you in this video. So I'm excited to show you how I made this project. Before we get started, I did want to let you know we are a family-owned online craft store and we are an authorized Cricut retailer. So if you need any of the materials or if you need a new machine, I've included everything that I'm using in the description below and you can shop for all that on our website. Okay, let's get started. I found the image by searching through the images in the Cricut image library. So select images and then I just typed in mandala and I found the image from here. So if you scroll down a little, it's this one right here. And just in case it's not there when you search, here's the tag. You can always copy and paste this into the search bar, hit enter, and it'll pull the exact image up. So I'm going to select this and insert it onto my canvas. Now, as you can see, it's coming up in all different shades of blue. So if you come over to the layers panel, you'll see that all of the different layers are in different shades of blue and green, which is really pretty, but I wanted to reflect the colors that I'm going to be using today in the different pieces of paper. So to change the color of your layers, you'll just select the layer over here in the layers panel, and then come up by operation, select the square, and then you can choose your different color. So then we can go through and change all of the different layers to be the different colors that we'll be working with. This will also be really helpful because, as you can see, our image is changing over here and it's going to give us a nice visual of what our project will look like in the end. So there's our mandala, but the next thing that I did was added a square onto my canvas. This is going to be our craft board, and I'm going to change the dimensions to be 10 by 10. So if you type in 10 and hit enter, leaving that lock on, it'll automatically change for us. And now I'll change this to white. And now I'm going to add two circles onto the canvas. So first I'll size this one down. These are going to be the holes that the twine will go through. So we've got one, then we'll hit duplicate, and we've got a second. So we need to align these so that they are straight across. So to do that, we will just highlight the both of them and say align top, and then let's group them because now we'll bring this back up and place the dots where you would like them to cut. And I think about there looks good. And then we'll highlight the entire thing and say align, center, horizontally. Then we need to slice out our individual dots from the square. That way the Cricut knows to cut the circles out so that we can get our twine through. You can only cut two pieces at a time, so we'll cut each circle one by one. So again, come over to the layers panel select the square, and then hold the shift key down on your keyboard and select one of the circles. And now come to the bottom and say slice. And then make sure you don't move your square because we're going to slice it again. And we're going to select our square, select the other dot, and also say slice. And then when we move this, we have our two circles that are sliced out. And then you can get rid of all of these other dots here. Do you see how there's a bunch over in the layers panel? We don't need those, so let's just delete them. Perfect. Now we can bring our mandala back over, and we'll need to send it to the front. And you can size this down. I made mine to be about 8 inches, so I'll type in 8 and hit enter. And then we are all good to go. So now we have our mandala, and then we have our craft board that the mandala will stick onto. So then the next thing you'll need to do is make sure you have your machine selected. We are working with the Maker 3, and we'll click on Make It. Now it's going to ask us how we're going to load our materials. Since we are using a non-smart material and smart materials, we'll have to say multiple ways. To change how your material is going to be loaded, come over here on the left, and you'll see that this white piece is going to be our craft board, and that's going to go on a mat. So we need to click this drop down and say On Mat. But otherwise, all of these other layers will automatically default to be without a mat. And then we'll click Continue. And then it's going to connect to the maker over Bluetooth, and we'll choose Smart Paper Sticker Cardstock as our cutting setting. 
Before we get into the project, I wanted to highlight the materials really quick for you that I'll be using. So this is the Smart Paper Sticker cardstock that I'm using. This pack is the Pastels one. It comes with two sheets of each color, so you get 10 sheets total. So these are the five over here that I'll be using for this project. And then this black paper is called Craft Board. It's also from Cricut. It's a very heavy duty paper. So I'll be applying the sticker cardstock onto the craft board and that's what I'll also be using to hang um, on my wall. So it'll be holding all of the sticker cardstock. The first material that we're going to be cutting is this craft board. I'm going to apply it onto a standard grip cutting mat. So we'll get this lined up. And then I've got my Maker 3 connected over Bluetooth. Make sure that your craft board is applied well onto your mat. That looks good. And we'll get this loaded in. And then we can hit the flashing go button. So that's going to cut our craft board. If you have never worked with craft board paper, like I said, it's really thick. So you'll actually see your Cricut cut it at least two times. I think it might be... It might be three, but I think it's two. Anyway, it will cut it multiple times, so if you see that and you're like, oh no, what's going on? Totally normal. So we're gonna cut our craft board first, and then we'll do the smart paper sticker card stock next. Awesome, that's all finished, so we'll hit the unload button. And then to remove this from the cutting mat, I'm gonna flip my mat over and bend it back while I hold the material straight. This way the mat does the bending and not our material. So there's what our base looks like. So you can see the two holes here. That's where that twine will go through. So I'm just going to set this off to the side for now. And then we can go ahead and cut our smart paper next. But before we do that, don't forget, we will change our cutting setting for our Cricut to the smart paper sticker cardstock. All right, I just got my paper in order that I'll be cutting it, but I'll also be just double checking on design space here. Now to load the smart material, I'm going to push it up against this left guide right here, and there are sensors that will catch it, but just slide it underneath and push it up against the roller, and then hit that load and unload button. And the first thing it's gonna do is pull the material through, align it, and make sure that we have enough. So that's what you see it doing here. Oops. And then when it's ready, we'll hit the flashing go button. So that's as simple as it is to load the material into your machine. And then if you'll remember, with the Maker 3 and the Explore 3, when you're using smart materials, it cuts the materials two times faster than the previous models. And it cuts very, very fast. So you can see that going here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get all of my paper cut. So I'll just be going through the next four colors here and then we'll move on from there. We just finished cutting the Smart Paper Sticker cardstock and let me give you a little close up of what it looks like. It cut so well. These are very intricate designs and it's so, so pretty. I'm very excited to piece this all together. But before we do that, I'm actually going to just go ahead and cut all my material down to size. If you have a paper trimmer, this would be really helpful. I have one, but I actually don't have the new one that's large enough, but that's totally fine. All I'm gonna do is go around the design and then I'll be able to save the remainder for future projects. Now, I won't be able to put it into my machine without a mat anymore. So when you're working with smart materials on the Maker 3 and the Explore 3, you need at least six inches of material. So unfortunately, I won't be able to do that on these anymore, but I can go ahead and just place them on a cutting mat and cut them that way. Now we're going to go ahead and get all of our smart paper aligned and layered onto our craft board. I placed my layers in the order that I'll be sticking them. So this will be the bottom layer and then the second from the bottom and so forth. I also have it up on Design Space on my computer to my side here. I'll put a little screenshot here on the video so you can see. I'm checking that too just to double check that I'm doing everything correctly, um, but I just want to make sure that I get all the layers where they're supposed to go. And so that's how I'm doing it. So I've got those in order here. I've got it pulled up on Design Space to my left, and now we will get going. So with the Smart Paper Sticker card stack, it's just basically a giant sticker and our base layer is just going to be a circle and so I'm just going to actually bend it back like this, 
how I typically remove materials from a mat and I'm going to hold the paper straight while I bend the backer off the Smart Paper sticker cardstock. That way the paper is staying straight. Now I'm going to get this centered. The nice thing about using this mat here is that it's really helping me get everything aligned. So just trying to keep it centered here. And then all you have to do is place it down when you're happy and push. Super, super easy. Now that we've got our first layer finished, we'll move on to the next one. These are going to be a little more challenging, of course, than just placing one large circle on here. They just have a lot of detail to them. So my biggest tip for this is just to go slow. There are two different ways you can do this. The first way would be to flip it over and bend it back just like we did for the yellow circle and remove it that way. The other way would be to just peel it up and go nice and slow. I'm going to do both ways. I'm actually not sure which is going to be the best way, so we'll figure this out together. I'm just going to grab some tools here just in case. One thing I did notice when I was prepping for this project is the only downside to doing it this way is that all of the cuts are still staying in there. So we'll just have to go through and manually remove those just like that. But the benefit to this is the mandala is staying straight. So let's try this and see how this goes first. So I'm just going to peel the back. And then we'll just pop out the inside of the mandala. For this being my first project, I probably could have picked something a little easier to do, but I just loved the look when I saw this project or this design in Design Space and I really wanted to try it out. So this is actually working really well. Of course, the downside maybe is my fingers are on it for longer, but I don't think it's really going to lose any adhesive or any stickiness. And for the next mandala layer, we will try doing it a different way and see what works best. So. Play around with this and see what you like, but this is actually, I think, working pretty well. So let me just finish this one up. Alright, I just finished with this layer. Look how pretty that is. And now I'm just going to get it aligned onto my yellow circle. All right, so we're on to our next layer, and I kind of had, I think, a revelation while I was doing this purple layer. I think I'm going to try and use my weeder tool and remove these paper pieces. Um, I think that's going to work really well. At least I'm a little optimistic. So let's try that. So you can just kind of dig in and peel them up. Just like you would weed vinyl, we'll just remove our little sticker pieces. And check that out. It's working perfectly. I think this will probably be the most efficient way to weed. You just kind of have to dig a little bit into the smart paper just because it is so thick, but I, I'm liking this. As I'm going here, I just was thinking one helpful tip for you guys might be you are, I should say, it's not recommended to use transfer tape with the smart paper sticker cardstock. The main reason is because since it's a paper, the transfer tape will most likely rip your design. So when we're transferring it, you have to transfer it in like one whole chunk like you just saw with the purple. So unfortunately, it's not recommended to use transfer tape. And that's kind of why I'm also trying to experiment and see the best way to move the paper to our project. But I have to say, I'm liking this better than the other way, although that way was not bad at all. But this is working really well, I think. All right, I just finished our pink layer and that worked really, really well. So there's what that looks like up close. And now again, I'm just going to flip this over and then hold the material straight while I peel the paper back from the sticker. This will be especially helpful with these really intricate designs. Oh my goodness, look how cute that is. So pretty. I noticed I just missed one. There we go. Okay, so now we'll layer our pink layer on top, just like we did the purple layer. Go nice and slow, and then when you're happy, whoops, not happy. 
I'm also trying to line up these like little triangles in the middle. I think that looks good. This will get a little trickier as we keep layering all these pieces together. So go nice and slow. I already know that one's not 100% perfect, but it still looks really good. So there's that one. That's what that looks like now. So you'll just line up all of these um, pieces together. So it actually is kind of simple to line up, but it's just a little time consuming. Okay, <clears throat> now we're going to do our blue layer. Since this one is pretty complex, I'm going to use that same method and weed it out. But then I'm going to try one different way for removing the smart paper on this guy. And the reason I'm going to do that is it's just a little less complex. So I'm going to weed this blue one next. The smart paper is really thick, so you really have to kind of dig your weeder tool in. Just be careful not to puncture all the way through the paper backing. If you do, I don't think it's going to be a huge deal, but just a heads up there. And then for this one, since these pieces are so big, I'm peeling it up, but I'm holding my material flat. Again, I'm just trying to keep it nice and straight so I don't have any cupping like that. It's fun to see this all get pieced together. I'm like anxious to finish this up, but we've got two more layers. So let me finish this one up and then we will get to our green layer next. And I'll try that different way of applying it, of weeding it and applying it. And we'll see out of all the three ways to weed and apply, I'll see which one I like the best. I just finished our blue layer and here's what that looks like. One thing I did think of, as you can see these tiny little pieces in the middle, I probably wouldn't go too much smaller than this eight inch circle, at least in working with the smart paper sticker cardstock. I think if you were using vinyl or iron on, it might be better, but with those being so tiny, I think like intricate cuts that are really small might be a little challenging for this material. Um, it worked just perfectly for me here, but I'm just thinking, if you go a lot smaller, it might be a little more challenging, but definitely experiment and try. All right, so we'll remove this paper backing. And just go really carefully. It is so fun to just watch these come together. And I see another one that I missed in the middle, so watch out for those. And now we can get this lined up as well. So what I'm going to do is again line up like the triangles in the middle are going to be like my little guide here and then I'm going to place it down. This is exciting it's coming together and I love the like dimension so far. So we have one more layer and I'm going to uh, try removing this a different way. I've seen some people just peel it up like this maybe I'll use the spatula tool and just kind of like wiggle their way so I'm just gonna try it and see if I like it and if not I'm just gonna go back to that weeding way because I really really liked that so I'm just kind of peeling it up but to be honest I already know that I'm not gonna like this because do you see how it's cupping the paper I don't want that so I think of the three ways that I just weeded and applied, for sure using the weeder tool was my favorite. So we used three different methods for trying to weed and transfer the paper. The first one, we flipped the material over, peeled it off, and then weeded it with our hands. And that one did work well. Then the second was weeding it like I am here with the weeder tool. This one for sure, for sure is my favorite, especially with itty bitty pieces. It's easier to grab them with the weeder tool than your hand. And then the way that I just tried was peeling it up and I didn't really love that because it started to bend my paper and I don't want to end up like getting a giant cup or rip in the paper. So there are three different ways though um, that you can try and see what works for you. But for me, this one is my favorite and I'll probably continue to just weed it like this. And I am so excited to get this onto 
my project here. I think I'm gonna hang this up in the office somewhere. We just moved into a new location at Crafty Corner and we need some new decorations for the walls. So I think that would be really pretty. So again, flipping it over so that my material can stay straight and the paper can do the bending. I'm keeping it nice and tight here. And then here goes our last layer. So this layer, I am actually just looking at my computer over here because I wasn't 100% sure where it went. So definitely use your computer um, or design space as a reference if you aren't 100% sure. And I think I'm happy with it being right there. It's definitely not 100% perfect, but I still think it's very pretty. So I'll push down. And then we are complete with the layering and now let's just grab our twine quick and I'm just gonna loop it through this first hole and then I'm going to tie a knot, probably double knot it. And our project is all complete. So here's a close up of the mandala. I think it turned out really, really well. So this was my first time, like I said, making a project like this using the Smart Paper Sticker cardstock. And I've actually never made a mandala before either. So I am kind of laughing at myself because I'm like, wow, I really like went in and did, I think, a little bit more of a complex project with all the weeding that we had and layering. So it's 100% like not perfect, but it's handmade. And I think it turned out so cute. I'm very, very excited about it. So that is how you can use the new Smart Paper Sticker Cardstock. It is a really nice material, you guys. I'm really impressed with it. And I love how these colors just pop off of this black craft board. So there you go. That's how you can use the new Smart Paper Sticker Cardstock on the Cricut Maker 3. Remember, you can use this specific material on the Explore 3 as well. And if you don't have the machines, just put it on a mat and use it on your machine. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below and someone on our team would be happy to help you out. Thanks for watching.